सो हेलो गाइज अथर्व हियर एंड हियर वी हैव क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर फ्राम चेक यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द चैप्टर रोटेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट बिफोर डूइंग दिस क्वेश्चन यू कैन यू शुड ट्राई द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन विच आई अपलोडेड विच इज ट्वेंटी थर्ड क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द सेम एक्सरसाइज ऑफ दिस रोटेशन चैप्टर एंड दिस इट इज़ अ सिंपल वर्जन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन सो प्लीज लुक एट इट वंस बिफोर ट्राइंग दिस and this is a pretty tough question so please give it a fair share of your tries before uh, looking at its solution and the hint so yeah, now let's look at the question a uniform disk of radius r rests with a, one of its flat faces on a horizontal floor coefficient of friction between the disk and the floor is mu the disk is given an angular velocity omega not about its central vertical axis and simultaneously a horizontal velocity v not where v not is very very less than r times omega not find suitable expression for initial acceleration of the mass center of the disk so if you want to give it a try uh, you should do it now so yeah, now uh, if you want the hint here it is try using symmetric elements for integration just as we did in the last question or uh, look for instantaneous center of rotation uh, which will simplify your calculations uh, to some extent so if you want to give it a try again uh, you should do it now So yeah, now let's look at the solution. So the first method uh, which I'll use is by direct integration, which is very similar to the last part, last question which I did, and this involves direct integration using symmetric elements, and is quite similar to the last question as I had said. So let's consider two small elements as shown in the figure. Here I assume that the disk is moving in the uh, x direction with v not velocity, and it's rotating in a clockwise sense with an angular velocity of omega not. so from here we can consider the two elements uh, this one and this one which are at an angle of theta uh, from the x axis uh, in the positive uh, in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant so from here we, what we can see is that uh, the particles uh, these small particles these small elements will have velocity v not in the x direction and omega r in the tangential direction and similarly uh, this one has a velocity v not in this direction and a tangential velocity in that direction so uh, looking at this part in an enlarged way so it's clear we can consider uh, this to be v not in the uh, horizontal direction and omega r in this direction so the net velocity of the particle let's assume is given by this green arrow so the friction force will be acting in this direction the op direction opposite to its net velocity and let's say it makes an angle of phi with the horizontal as shown here so and similarly uh, on this element the second element it will have the same friction force at an angle of phi directed above the horizontal so from here we can see that the ver their vertical components will cancel out and only the horizontal components will stay till the end and here we can write cos phi by uh, using uh, vector uh, by using parallelogram law and uh, by solving for uh, cos of phi you can find that cos phi equals to v not plus omega r sin theta over root of v not square plus omega r omega square r square plus 2 v not omega r sin theta and note that this angle is 90 minus theta and not theta so that's why we get a sin theta here so uh, that that uh, that's the overall picture and now we will have to integrate this over all theta so from here we can clearly see that the as i explained uh, clearly see that the two elements have been chosen in such a way that the vertical components of the frictional force in the figure will always cancel out for each such pair so in the end only the horizontal component will survive in the net force so the force can be written as follows so the uh, dfx or the small force in the x direction can be written as mu times sigma times r dr d theta times g times cos phi this cos phi is giving the uh, horizontal component this is the small area of this element and sigma times this gives the small dm and uh, mu dmg gives us the frictional force so this is the uh, small force in x direction so uh, this can be written as and here substituting the value of cos phi from above we can write cos phi equals to v not plus omega r sin theta over v not square plus omega square r square plus 2 v not omega r sin theta so uh, and we have to manipulate only this value because these are all cannot be changed so uh, what we can see from here uh, and we have been given that v not square is negligible in comparison to omega omega square r square as as it was given in the question so we can neglect this in comparison to as there as there is a omega square r square present in the uh, denominator and uh, we can uh, neglecting v not square and taking omega r 
omega square r square common from the uh, square root we get uh, this to be 1 plus 2 v naught sin theta by omega r so uh, and uh, again here v naught is very very less com in comparison to omega r so we here we can use the binomial approximation uh, of uh, 1 plus x root of 1 plus x where x is very very small it can be written as 1 plus x over 2 so this can be written as 1 plus v naught sin theta by omega r and uh, uh, again as this quantity is comparatively very small so 1 by 1, one plus x can be written as 1 minus x so uh, uh, we can write this as omega square r square times um, and in the numerator we get omega r minus v naught sin theta so uh, uh, finally integrating this over theta equals to 0 to 2 pi as it is covering the whole disk and 0 equals uh, r equals to 0 to r and uh, taking mu sigma g by omega square common and note that here sigma is uh, surface mass density uh, i'm sorry i didn't tell that earlier and uh, so from here expanding this in the numerator we get uh, v naught omega r minus v naught square sine sin theta plus omega square r square sine theta minus v naught omega r sine theta square so from here what we can see is that v naught square sin theta and omega square r square sin theta uh, these uh, these values will tend to uh, will become zero in the limit of zero to two pi as uh, sin theta will be in integrated to co uh, cos of theta minus of cos theta and it is cos of theta is same for zero and two pi so these two terms can be uh, ignored and from here v naught omega r minus v naught omega r square v naught omega r sine square theta can be written as v naught omega r cos square theta and the r in the numerator and denominator co cancels so we get uh, the final finally we get fx equals to mu mu sigma g over omega square times integral of from 0 to r for dr and from 0 to 2 pi for d theta v naught omega cos square theta so uh, what we can write from here and on uh, if you run the evaluate the integral yourself for cos square theta we finally get fx equals to mu sigma g v naught times pi r ome by omega and here we can write sigma times pi r square to be m which is the total mass and so we can simplify fx to be mu m g v naught by r omega and the acceleration will be uh, this force divided by mass and we finally get the value of acceleration to be mu g v naught by r omega and i would like to tell you that the answer given in the book is twice of uh, mu g v naught by r omega and uh, that is actually wrong they have uh, made a mistake here most probably in this binomial approximation by not taking the factor of half here so that's why uh, this is the correct answer and that's the uh, that's the end of solution one so now let's look at the solution two now this solution is slightly different than the first one in such a way that we don't need to integrate over the whole surface rather we can select a circular region about the instantaneous center of rotation icr on which the net force will be zero by symmetry and the net force will be found by the forces on the remaining part so let's consider the diagram shown below so here i have assumed that uh, the point o is the center of the disk and uh, here uh, uh, it is moving the horizontal direction by with a velocity v in the uh, positive x direction and so from here we get the instantaneous center of rotation to be a which is, which is at the distance of small r and here r can be written as omega naught uh, v v over omega naught so and here we can clearly see that if we consider this circular disk this small one which is inside the larger one uh, it will have all equal forces as it is rotating about its center clearly and so the net force on uh, due to this disk will be zero so the net force due to uh, will be only remain to due to this uh, extra part uh, which uh, hasn't been uh, the torque due to which hasn't been compensated anywhere so uh, now let's look at its geometry first uh, to see some values so from here as r is very very less than r we can write that ab this length can be written as r capital r plus small r sin theta which is an approximation to the first order and you can see it by applying cosine rule in this triangle and you can get this re result easily so this implies uh, this result implies that the distance between inner and the outer circle here is r sin theta at this point at an angle theta we have considered a region d theta this is a small element here 
uh, in the diagram it has been exaggerated uh, to show it clearly so this distance uh, is r sin theta so uh, and again just as we did in the first solution here it can be proved that the force is just horizontal so here the horizontal component for the rest of the part the extra part uh, which i said can be written as the uh, small dm element dm for this small element the small mass will be sigma times r sin theta times r minus r sin theta times d theta which will approximately be sigma rr sin theta d theta so the uh, small friction force on this element will be df will be sigma times mu m, mu g times rr sin theta d theta so uh, and dfx will be the horizontal component of this so we added a, sin, a factor of sin theta here so this is simply an integral of uh, sigma mu g rr sin square theta d theta and which finally gives us the same result as in the as we got from first uh, part and uh, finally we get the value of a to be mu g v by omega r so uh, this one simplified the calculations uh, quite to quite some extent but this one is uh, slightly harder to visualize and this one uh, this question is actually uh, also there in the uh, calda handouts uh, in mechanics uh, it's question number 20 so you can uh, also check it out and the second solution is from the uh, solution manual manual uh, compiled by the physics olympiad website and the link to it is in the description so credit to them for this brilliant solution so hope you all like the video and please like share and subscribe thank you